Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. We've been messing around a little bit with the 15 minutes of game format and changing things around a little bit and trying to figure out what works best. And I'm going to try something a little bit different for a while, maybe for the next few weeks, just to see whether or not it's resonating with people or see whether or not it's actually useful. Ultimately, we just don't have time to look at all of the games that get sent our way. Like, we have many times more games than we could ever possibly cover. So, looking for formats that give smaller games that maybe we wouldn't consider looking at a WTF is a bit of a platform anyway, is something that I think is beneficial to everybody. And it's also just easier to digest. The old format for 15 minutes of game was like over a 45 minute show, and it's that's just too long. So said a lot of people. We're looking at retention rates on it as well, and they were dropping off. So try something a little bit shorter and a little bit more regular. I want to ideally try and get one of these out every weekday. That would be kind of cool, although we'll see whether or not we can stick to that. So without further ado, 15 Minutes of Game presents Flywrench. This is by Messhoff, the developers of Nidhogg, and it is described as an acrobatic space kind of flying game thingy, avoiding obstacles and all that sort of thing. Let me give it a shot. I've gone through the tutorial. The tutorial didn't really tell me too much, I've got to admit. I'm not 100% sure exactly what this game's all about, so I guess we're going to dive right into it and the timer starts now. Alright then. To Pluto it is. I'm not entirely sure what the task is in the first place. Set your ship to the right color and you can pass through barriers, it says. Unlock this gate, dude. All right, then. It's a rather interesting interface, isn't it? I mean, Nidhogg had a very specific kind of design. It also re almost reminded me of the Atari 2600. Hello. Okay. Well, I beat the first level. I'm amazing, obviously. And this is all about red. So I can change my color here, as you can see, by tapping the X button and holding it. So what I want to do, I think, is gain enough momentum to pass through this while also being the correct color. So you can flap up and down, which needless to say allows you to sort of stay airborne. I can also change my color to green if I wish, which allows me to spin. So I want to be white to go through here, red to go there. Damn, okay. Red to go through there, and then, no, no. So I do want to actually let it fall. All right, there we go. Red, white, there. Okay, nice and easy. There we go, no problem at all. I have the feeling this is going to get really, really difficult very, very fast. All right, so let's flap through that. So we need enough momentum to get through there. There we go. Not too difficult. You can also do super flaps and anti-flaps, which I imagine are fairly important for getting the right amount of momentum going. So we want to do- no. Nope. And of course, if you hit the sides, you instantly die. So it's giving me Stephen Hawking's version of Flappy Bird vibes. That's If I was to describe it based on like my absolute first impression, that's exactly what it is. It's Flappy Bird for nuclear physicists. All right, let's come on. Let's see if we can get that boost. Nope. We need to do the right boost here. Otherwise, we're not getting anywhere. Music's nice. Got to admit. Oh, damn it. Uh, no. I had some momentum. That, no, not that. Absolutely not. No, get, get your momentum going. There you go. Nice and easy. All right. Not at all nice and easy. At all. Absolutely not. This is trickier than it looks. Pass through there. There we go. Okay, good. This game consists of over 170 levels, and it also has a level editor as well, so I have no doubt some particularly evil stuff is coming out of this at some point. Flap, hold. Flap, flap, flap. No! Too many flaps. There we go. Oh! Oh! No! <laughs> God, it's like the Devil's Ikaruga. Come on. It's... I mean, it's such a simple idea, in theory, and then you suddenly realize that- Oh, no! It's actually a nightmare! Absolute bloody nightmare! That- No, come on! Even if I remember to change the color correctly, I still mess up by losing momentum and falling into that bloody side! You know, I much preferred Nidhogg because it didn't make me want to tear what remains of my hair out. For the most part. There we go. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Okay, bit of momentum. No, too much momentum. Bloody hell. I need to remember how to do that anti-flap thing that you could do. I believe it was holding up and down, if I recall correctly. Oh, 
Come on. Just... This, it's so simple and yet so infuriating. Ow! Bloody hellfire. It's an example of a collection of very simplistic mechanics turned into a hell's beast of a title. Yes! There we go. It's so satisfying to eventually get through it. Now what? Oh, I don't even want to know. Don't even want to know. There's the spin. Hold that. There we go. Nope. Hold that. Flap, flap, flap. Yeah. Too much flap. Excessive amounts of flap. Ah. There you go. There you go. I can only imagine how evil this is going to get later on. Okay. Fourth. I mean, that's difficult enough in and of itself, and that's without considering any of the color changing and momentum nonsense. All right, there we go. Flap a couple of times, flap a couple of times. There we go. It's not exactly what I call a visually striking game. I think it's totally fair for me to not call it that, considering that keeping control of the sodding thing is tricky enough. There we go. Yeah. Good. Good. And it hasn't incorporated the green in yet. That's what scares me. It's like, well, this is only two colors. And how difficult can that be? Well, the answer is quite difficult. There you go. Cool. We're in business. We're in business. So if you want to know who does the soundtrack, it's actually on the Steam page. It's by Daedalus Dintel... Good night, Cody. Knife City Kun Leader. As I crash while I'm reading all these things. You don't even let your bloody have a break, does it? Good lord. Just a, just a slight break. Just, just a little rest. A little rest. <laughs> ah, it was so close. And yet so infuriatingly far. Okay, white, white, white. Red. Up, 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 up. Red. No. And then you've got to aim it properly. White, white, white. Red. Flap, 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 flap. Red. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, let's <laughs> read off the rest of the composers before we go any further. Knife City, Coup Leader, Machine Drum Baths, Danny Skriller and Om Unit, Syndicate, Spaz Kid, and Sweat Sun Clank. I admit to never hearing of any of those at any point. It's, uh, this is quite the beast. You know, Nidhogg was kind of similar in the way that it, it used very minimalistic mechanics and yet create a, ver a very tense game. This time around, though, it's done it with single player. And incorporated elements of old titles like Lunar Lander and then, of course, newer stuff like Flappy Bird. I imagine without Flappy Bird, a game like this probably wouldn't have been made. I'm not sure if I should be thankful to Flappy Bird or resent it even more than I already do at this point. Oh my, okay. That's, uh, that's not easy. Yeah, oh. I need to remember how to do that anti-flap. Oh, interesting. If you go green, it'll actually bounce you off the yellow. It, am I colorblind or is that actually yellow? Because that looks green to me. Seems a little odd that green would bounce you off the yellow side. Huh. Very strange. Oh my, really? Oh, and it sort of drives you off to the side as well, just to make matters even worse. So staying balanced is even trickier. I can definitely see this getting a cult following from people that are after the super hard stuff. I mean, so far this is I mean, kind of easy enough, but that's relative. Can't imagine what it's going to throw at me later. There we go. No! Oh, bloody hell. It's weird because your instinct is to flap when you're falling. And yet if you flap, you change your color so you can't bypass certain obstacles. Thank you for the achievement. Apparently that's 100 deaths in under 10 minutes. I hope this game has a proper death count. It's got it. I mean, it had an achievement that told me how many times I died. It's obviously counting my deaths. I think that would be kind of interesting. Uh, no. oh. 
You slowly, slowly make progress. Slow. No. Mm. But you need to gather some momentum there. You can get up there. Then you need to flap maybe once more to get enough momentum to get through that and then not crash into that. And also, of course, remember that green can save you. There we go. But it bounces you all over the place. So even if it is a savior, it's uh, not much of one. There we go. Tricky, tricky. Okay, so we bypassed the first one. I can go to a different planet now. I've also unlocked a bunch of themes, which is a bit interesting. I wonder how those work. Well, let's enter Neptune, I suppose. Let's give that a bash. I'm not exactly sure what the storyline is here, but I don't think it really matters, does it? Oh. Oh, now they actually have green, and they allow for the bouncing. Yeah, that, that's what confused me. I mean, why exactly does the green spinning allow you to bounce off the yellow, and yet green is also required to get through green barriers? It's a little counterintuitive. A little. But at least I can blaze through these first couple of levels. That's always nice. Makes you feel better about yourself. <laughs> I think you need a little bit of a pick-me-up. A little bit of an ego boost when playing a game like this. Please stop plunging to your death. You see, the way I can see them now designing the levels is, oh, you go green and you can bounce, so it's safe, right? So then you immediately put a bunch of red stuff below that so that you fail. The levels with only the green, in theory, you can't fail because you can never die by hitting the sides. So you can just hold the button down until you win. But then once you start incorporating white and red barriers, that's when things start to get difficult. Oh my, okay. There's my muscle memory going. This music's so good, though. I'd actually buy the soundtrack to this. Personal taste, of course, but it's quite nice. All right, well, that's easy enough. Just don't mess... No! There you go. Yeah, I can already see what they're going to be doing to me later as a result of that. Ah, but... Just, no, I don't have the momentum anymore. Okay. Bounce, bounce, bounce. There we go. Get a bunch of momentum, change, and split. There you go. You do feel like a bit of a pro when you've beaten something like that, I have to admit. As infuriatingly, hideously tricky as it is. Ah, no. So you need a little momentum going into this. Then you can kind of bounce around a little bit. Don't want to bounce around too much because you'll lose all your momentum. And then you can't make your way through. So I guess you can keep bouncing there. But you got to bounce at the right time. Oh, just when you think you've mastered a particular aspect of this accursed thing. There you go. The timing is split second, even on the easier levels. Just nightmarish, really. There you go. So suppose as we sort of reach the end of this video, and I suppose all, all of the videos after this, the conclusion has to be something along the lines of, would this be a game that I would keep playing? I mean, for me, no, because it's really not my sort of game. I'm not into the uber frustrating... I suppose this is a platformer for all intents and purposes, isn't it? Isn't it? It's not a traditional platformer by any stretch of the imagination, but it certainly contains the aspects of a platformer that make a platformer difficult. So yeah, you can call it a platformer. And I'm not hugely into difficult platformers by any means. But you've got to appreciate the elegance and simplicity here. I always appreciate a solid set of mechanics. And this game certainly has that, there's no doubt. Oh, no. Oh man, this is tricky. Some of the best games of all time, of course, have taken very simple, solid mechanics and made a huge success out of them. I mean, look at Tetris. A game doesn't have to be complex, it just has to be challenging for a good reason. You don't necessarily need mechanic laid on top of mechanic and hugely complex systems to make a difficult game. That should be blindingly obvious. I mean, hell, just look at Flappy Bird. As much as I despise that game, you've got to admire just how difficult they made a game that only requires one button. Oh, this is... this is nightmarish. It looks so easy, but it's not, because you have to get the red, and then you've got to go through that safely, and you can't resort to green to bounce because you'll end up hitting the white barrier. Oh! 
This is where you enter one of those spirals of failure. Okay, so you can go... No. And that becomes the absolute worst. Because then you just hate your experience with this thing. Da! I'm not the kind of person that can tolerate that level of difficulty. And it's so rapid as well. You, you just get thrown right back into it. It's like the game gives you no breather. It's like, oh, you failed? Do it again. Now. Immediately. Or else. Oh! So close. No. It is unyielding in how evil it is. And you've got to admire something that does that on a base level, don't you? Ugh. You can also hate it with every fiber of your sodding being, but I know that people are absolutely looking for a challenge like this. I'm not one of those people. I, I, I'm the sort of person that doesn't need more stress in their life. And Fly Wrench is giving me panic attacks at this point. But there's a lot to admire about it. I mean, the game is hideous, but why would it need to look any better for what it does? Like, it's purely function. There's no form here. It's all function all the time. No! No, wrong button. It's all about muscle memory and quick reaction times and not sucking! Which is where I... Oh, it was right there! It was right there! Oh, that's so dismal. No! Oh, okay. My 15 minutes are up. I need to escape Fly Wrench. Good lord. Oh, God. That's $10 of pain right there. With a level editor, time trials, and over 170 or so levels of absolute nonsense. Man, that is tricky. Would I keep playing it? No, but then that's me. You know, I'm not the sort of person that pursues that level of visceral challenge. But I think there's a lot to appreciate about a game that is so unyielding in what it's asking you to do, that never gives you a break, that is consistently challenging you to be better. And something that is so deceptively simple. There's a lot to admire about that, even if it's just purely from a critical level. There are those thrills. Even if I did not enjoy most of my time with it, there are those thrills, those moments when you execute it that feel so fantastic. And yes, some gamers do pursue that. I think maybe all of us do to a greater or lesser extent. And I think maybe, at least based on my first 15 minutes, Fly Ranch might be a game that distills that down to its very essence. Damn, that is evil. <laughs> Fly Ranch, ladies and gentlemen, you can find it on Steam for $10 if you so desire. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.